Life at Kent House is always interesting and never boring. There are always challenges to face and solutions to be found. However, it appears that this is a position that the external workforce relishes. They continue to find opportunities for real improvements and innovations in services and more effective use of resources. There are many examples I could cite, but today I will take you through the recent improvements in the Council's street cleaning service. Last year, Environment Amenity Services Managers and the External Workforce undertook a review of the Council's street cleaning service. The Kennet District has for many years been classed as one of the cleanest districts in the country, and the Council has consistently been in the top quartile for time taken to clear litter reports. However, we decided we could do better. When the review was taking place, it would have been easy for all concerned to have simply sat on the Council's laurels and avoided change. However, the team that undertook the review decided that this was an opportunity to facilitate re-engineering the service and to bring real improvements. This is not a surprise to the people that know the street cleaners. These men provide a street cleaning service for 364 days a year. They start work at 6am and are often found clearing up after some event or other at 10pm at night. The cooperation and willingness of the external workforce to accept change throughout the review process cannot be praised enough. They actively sought new ways of working and better use of resources. Alan, who was responsible for road sweeping in devices, used to use a road sweeper. When Alan reviewed the work he undertook, he found that although he did sweep up some detritus, the majority of his time was spent picking up litter. He felt that using an expensive road sweeping machine was not the best use of resources and he suggested that he would undertake the work with a small walk-behind pedestrian sweeper. This allowed the council to reduce the sweeper fleet by a vehicle whilst at the same time maintaining and improving cleanliness standards in the town. Brian, who was responsible for pavement cleaning, used to use the small walk-behind sweeper. Brian found that he was sweeping up very little detritus and all his cleaning was litter collection. He suggested surrendering his machine to Alan and agreed to use a barrow to collect litter. Brian also changed his hours of work. He used to work from 8am in the morning to 4pm in the afternoon. When Brian finished work in the town, this was the end of sweeping in the centre. Brian agreed to change his hours of work to 10am in the morning to 6pm in the evening. This meant that when workers finished in the town centre and shoppers finished shopping, Brian was available to clean up behind them. Mickey and Steve used to have a machine each. One would drive to Marlborough and undertake sweeping and the other would drive to Tidworth. What they found was by using one machine with one person litter picking and the other one sweeping, they could clean all the areas using just one machine. This allowed the council to save a further vehicle. The funding arising from the surrendering of the two sweeping vehicles was invested in a late evening workforce. Two crews were created. The first was an evening hit squad. The council already had a day hit squad which used a small cage vehicle and responded to litter and refuse complaints. They used to work 8am to 4pm. After review, their start time was moved forward to 6am and they finished at 2pm. The evening hit squad then used the same cage lorry. This allowed a vehicle that was used for seven and a half hours to double its working hours to 15. In addition to this, because the increased operational times resulted in spare capacity, the hit squad was tasked with cleaning the town centres before finishing work. This means that the town centre's cleaning is now undertaken between 6am in the morning and 10pm at night. One further staff member was employed, again working in the evenings. He was paired with the council's existing large sweeper driver, Jason. Under the old system, the sweeper would work for seven and a half hours a day. However, this has now been increased to 15, which has very significantly maximized the vehicle's usage. These men have changed the hours they work and significantly sought better solutions for the council. They have embraced and even suggested change. They have taken ownership of their service and made a good service even better. Kennet owns and operates a vehicle fleet comprising 23 lorries, 30 assorted medium and small vans, ride-on mowing machines, 
tractors and various other plant vehicles, a total of 43 commercial vehicles and 53 vehicles overall. The insured value of the fleet, including 40 other assorted machines, is £2,300,000. To put this amount into perspective, a refuse collection lorry costs around £130,000 and a small van £8,000. Irrespective of the type of vehicle or machine, everything has to be inspected and serviced to standards set out by the Department for Transport, the Health and Safety Executive and the Environment Agency. Depending on how hard each vehicle is worked, inspection and service intervals vary from every four weeks for skip vehicles and some refuse vehicles to every year or so for small vans. In terms of size, this is a large fleet that requires a good deal of looking after. Furthermore, many of the large vehicles have complex and potentially hazardous machinery that requires both skilled operation and specialist maintenance. So, just how do we look after nearly 100 vehicles and machines? Well, up until two years ago, a number of staff working from three different locations were responsible for the very many and varied aspects of vehicle and specialist machinery operation, including specification, procurement, inspection, maintenance, and eventual disposal and replacement. There was, however, a long-standing problem with this arrangement, and that no one person or team had an overview of the all-important and cost-critical whole-life performance of each vehicle. It is true to say that Kennet was virtually unique amongst commercial vehicle operators and other local authorities in running so large a fleet without a dedicated transport team. Part of the solution came about with the reorganisation of 2003, which saw the creation of Kennet's first ever transport manager from an existing post within the former technical services group. The first task for the transport manager was to examine whole life vehicle costs when it became apparent very quickly that Kennett was spending more on buying in external resources to deal with vehicle breakdowns and running repairs than would be spent on doing it ourselves, especially when the time that vehicles were out of service awaiting the arrival of a mechanic was taken into consideration and the fact that Environment and Amenity Services newly built premises included a fully equipped workshop. Enter Kennett's first ever vehicle technician. Appointed in March last year, Kennett was fortunate indeed to recruit Matt Johnston, fully qualified in every respect of large vehicle and heavy machinery maintenance, and with a vehicle specifically designed for providing assistance both on and off-road, Kennett's dependence on external contractors to deal with breakdowns was reduced from 100% to better than 1% within a matter of weeks. It is important to mention that the breakdown vehicle was also designed so as to replace the two ageing civil emergency vehicles that Kennett had in its fleet until that time, but which were otherwise little used due to their age and design limitations. Furthermore, Kennett's long-standing suppliers of vehicle support services were approached for sponsorship for the new vehicle, which generated contributions of over £10,000 in equipment and other costs. Although it did not subsequently take long for the transport manager and vehicle technician to begin to bring about changes to the way in which Kennett's vehicles are maintained, this process was nevertheless seriously constrained by the amount of administrative work generated and requiring in turn a comprehensive knowledge of both vehicle technology and the transport industry in general. Furthermore, certain aspects of vehicle maintenance, most notably tyres and fuel, account for a large proportion of the overall vehicle running costs. Yet at this time, it had not been possible to carry out any meaningful research in these areas, despite the potential to make considerable savings. Typical tyre repair and replacement costs for one year are £50,000 and fuel £400,000. A reduction, therefore, of just 10% of these costs could generate a saving of £45,000. Just as the case, therefore, to take on a vehicle technician was proven, so a further case was now made to recruit a full-time transport assistant, which saw the appointment in October last year of Barry Mitchell. With considerable experience in all aspects of commercial vehicle operation, Barry completed the transport team in every respect. In less than one year, therefore, Kennett moved from contracting out all of its breakdown and reactive maintenance operation to providing an in-house service with the equipment and expertise to deal with the majority of situations. And the way forward now? 
while we're working on it. <laughs>